His art may be abstract, but with a career spanning over 50 years, his reputation is anything but. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton and welcome to WatchMojo.com and today we'll be learning more about world-renowned modern artist Claude Tuzinha. Tell us what you can about Claude Tuzinha, his history and his background. Montreal Museum of Fine Arts back in the day had a school. He went to school there in the late 40s and early 50s and he started his career after a really brief brief trip to, to France where he was very disappointed in what he saw there and came back to Montreal, worked as a furniture designer, then started painting full time. Once he started painting, he couldn't stop and he just went on from the mid-50s and he's still painting today. He became very popular in the mid-60s with the, the paintings that are actually behind me uh, that were very dynamic or had like fluorescent colors in them and they were associated to a movement called op art that was very close to psychedelia but much more structured, much more graphic. And he sort of got recuperated by that movement and showed a lot in the United States. After that, once that movement kind of petered out, he was still concerned with the same problems that he's always been concerned with in painting. With How do you look at a painting? How does a painting work in space? And how does color affect you? How does color work with shape? And all these very formal questions. So he kind of pushed his exploration in a new direction in the 70s and the 80s. He discovered that he could go back to a type of painting that he had only tried very sporadically before, monochrome painting. So in the early 80s, he started working on this series that he's been working on off and on for the last 25 years. What styles and schools has he been influenced by? He was very influenced by early 20th century European art. Uh, Piet Mondrian, who was part of this movement called Die Stil in Amsterdam. And that was an international movement that decided that you can't really tell stories with pictures anymore. Pictures or paintings had to be different from everything we've ever seen. Like, how can painting be more part of real life? Well, if it has to be part of real life, it can't tell a story, because that's a fake, that's a lie. The only thing that we can show that's real is geometry. This was their conclusion. Claude was very influenced by the way these people thought of painting and decided to actuated in the 50s. And how would you say he pushes the boundaries of art? I think that he pushed it by calling a picture not a picture, calling a picture a painting, calling a picture an object. For centuries we've been looking to pictures for stories, stories taken from the Bible, stories of kings, stories of history, and all the way up to even the Impressionists, they told stories, they told stories of leisure, they told stories of city life. And then when you start to say, well, I don't want to tell stories, I want to tell the story of the moment you're living while you're in front of the painting, I want you to tell your story of the here and now. That'll be a different story for each person that'll go in front of it. So he pushed boundaries by almost taking all content out of things and making it about the experience. Thank you very much. You're welcome.